It was planned by Sir Douglas Haig, one of Britain's most experienced generals. Using mainly British and Commonwealth troops, it aimed to relieve the pressure on Verdun by drawing away the German reserves and destroy them. Haig was another of those who believed that the war must be won or lost on the Western Front. He also believed in old-fashioned crash-through or crash tactics. Later generations condemned Haig for using the tactics of a butcher and for never visiting the front line to see the awful slaughter his plans produced. But Haig was just one of the many generals on all sides in this great war to whom plans had become more important than people. And so, on the 1st of July, 1916, Haig's great Battle of the Somme began with a massive artillery barrage lasting five days. The British thought nothing could survive that barrage, and one commander even ordered his men to advance in parade ground formation. Unfortunately, many shells landed in no man's land, churning it to mud and making the advance difficult and slow. In addition, the Germans had survived the barrage in deep underground concrete shelters. As the attackers struggled towards them, German machine gunners rushed from their shelters, set up their weapons, and poured out a murderous fire. German artillery and aircraft soon joined in the attack, which quickly became another slaughter. In fact, it became the worst slaughter ever suffered by the British Army in a single day. No one dared to give an order to stop them that bright July morning. Haig had forbidden any changes in his plan, so whole units were sent to their deaths. Almost the entire Newfoundland regiment was wiped out before lunchtime on the first day. Friendly artillery also dropped short and knocked down whole companies of soldiers. Others were sucked down and drowned in the mud. By evening, over 57,000 casualties littered the battlefield. Hundreds of thousands more were to die as the attack continued week after week. The Australians, newly arrived in France from the Middle East, were pushed into a diversionary attack and lost five and a half thousand men in one day. They would lose four times that number before the Somme battles ended. The New Zealanders attacked the village of Fleurs, where the tank made its first ever appearance in battle. But despite the use of this secret weapon, the Kiwis suffered 6,000 casualties, a huge loss for a little nation. The Canadians, barely recovered from the gas of Second Ypres, were moved into a supposedly quiet section for a surprise attack. 
They lost two and a half thousand men before the attack even started. Before it ended, they would lose 24,000. In total, before the November rains ended the Battle of the Somme, Britain and France lost 600,000 men. 236,000 Germans also died in what their historians actually named Der Blutbad, the bloodbath. 